In today's video material, we will show how to wire modular enclosures and its equipment that will be applied in residential constructions. Electricians always have a problem when choosing equipment for a specific case. According to the method of installation, modular enclosures are divided into two groups, those intended for mounting into the wall or flush mounted, as we can see here, and those intended for mounting on the surface of the wall or wall mounted. Today we use this one for mounting on the surface of the wall. In addition to other characteristics, I consider very important the characteristics related to IP protection or protection against the penetration of foreign bodies such as water and dust, as well as the increasingly present IK protection related to the firmness of the board structure or protection that represent resistance against external mechanical impacts. The basic protection element in each modular enclosure is a circuit breaker. The basic characteristic of each circuit breaker is its rated current at which it should switch off or interrupt the circuit. Circuit breakers protect installations or conductors of excessive current that can occur as a result of a short circuit or as a result of overload. As for the trip curves, we distinguish between circuit breakers of curve B and curve C. Circuit B will trip when the current flowing through it reaches 5 times rated current and the circuit breakers of curve C will trip only when it reaches 30 times rated current. So, for modular enclosures in residential construction, we will use circuit breakers of curve B. Another important feature of circuit breakers is the braking capacity. What is definitely recommended is that the braking capacity of the circuit breaker is 6 kA for residential construction. In the measuring distribution cabinet, from where the switchboards in the apartment are powered, circuit breaker curve C of 25 amperes will be placed. This is so-called limited current and they serve to protect the power supply cable leading to the apartment modular enclosure. When choosing circuit breaker, you should pay attention to their reliability or their origin. Here we see an example of a circuit breaker that is obviously a copy and a very bad copy of an original. Be careful because such circuit breakers bring risk to your apartment. The next protection device located in the enclosure is a residual current device or commonly known as RCD device. The main purpose of this device is to protect people from danger due to the contact under voltage. There we see four pole or three phase and single phase RCD device. The basic characteristic is the rated current for which it is intended and there is so-called sensitivity specified on its surface, that is the rated residual operating current. It should be noted that specifically this RSD device has a sensitivity of 30 mA and this one is 10 times intensive or less sensitive 300 mA. Today on our market, that is with the designers themselves, there is one big dilemma as to which RSD device to design or install at all. Regulations stipulate that in rooms where there, is, where there are showers and bathtubs, it is necessary to use a 30 mA RSD device. For the rest of the living space, it is not precisely defined. But for spaces where the majority of people gather, for example in schools, hospitals, kindergartens, markets and so on, the regulation also requires the use of 30 mA sensitivity RSD device. Now it is up to you to decide whether to use a 30 mA RSD device for the rest of the living space or less sensitive one or not to use the RSD device for the rest of the living space at all. We decide to use a 30 mA RSD device for a complete living space or this modular enclosure application.
Therefore, we connect the RSD device directly with the power supply cable, which comes from the measuring distribution cabinet with three limited current class C. Next to it, we mount a circuit breaker. The energy directly from the output of the RSD device is led to the circuit breaker with the COM bus bar. So when we set up a COM bus bar, we immediately power all the circuit breakers and evenly distributed the load in phases. The neutral conductor is taken out of the RSD device and led to the neutral bus bar and the protective conductor, for example the grounding conductor, is led directly to the grounding bus bar. We now supply consumers directly from the output of circuit breakers. After selecting the appropriate equipment, we perform installation in the modular enclosure. Specifically, this modular enclosure has IP40 protection and in order to have easier access to the equipment and installation, we will remove the upper and lower station. When the equipment is in good quality, installation is very simple. Pay attention. We are approaching the installation of a COM bus bar, which is 12 places long, but we take care that we don't start from the very beginning, because that's a place for a neutral conductor. So we start from the L1 phase and see that one tooth is excess, so we have to remove it. We return the shortened bus bar to its shortened cover. It is important that they are placed above their markers in order to fit nicely into the equipment. Now we must return the mandatory protective caps and side protective caps. And now we have to comb bus bar adapter to our needs. This equipment has a so-called double connection, so there is an input specifically for the COM bus part and down input for conductors. Now we perform the initial tightening. Oh. This is the initial tightening, and then we will perform the tightening by hand. It is best to tighten with a torch ratch according to the gripping force prescribed by the manufacturer, in this case 2.5 newton meters. We did not tighten the screws on the differential current protection device itself, because from there we need to run the power supply to the lower row of fusses. To power the lower part of the equipment, a standard Lancome bus bar of 12 modules is suitable. We will skip these three circuit breakers because we will bring the power from the RSD device. We will prepare the conductors with which we will supply power. We will mount wire cable ends on the ends of the PF conductors because it is a stranded wire that can be damaged by tightening the screws. We will strip the wires in the length of 13 mm because that is what the manufacturer of safety circuit breakers prescribes. We will crimp the wire ends. We will repeat this procedure for the other two conductors. The supply conductors are cut to different lengths due to the route from phase L1 to phase L1 on the supply line of the circuit breaker. And we start assembling. The next thing we do is set up neutral and grounding bus bars. 
As for the production itself, they are identical bus bars and I place one in the bus bar area for neutral. And the other is a grounding bus bar. See how nicely it buckles up and holds up great. So the bus bar to which we will attach the neutral conductor will be the neutral bus and the one to which we will attach the grounding from the supply cable will be our grounding bus bar. So from the output of the RSD device we will bring the neutral point to the neutral bus bar. We are preparing the conductor. It is now necessary to tighten everything. The best way to do it is with a torch wrench and if we don't have one, we will rely on our experience. Pay attention when tightening the screws where there are no PF conductors underneath and the screws where we have PF conductors underneath. Here we tighten it to have torch maximum and we need to pay attention. See how much more it needs to be tightened because standing wires are settling down under pressure. The best advice is that before finishing the entire switchboard, all parts where the PF conductors are located should be tightened once more. We are now preparing and measuring the supply cable. The supply cable should be left long enough for the length of the entire switchboard and about half more to be able to return to the top. So we are going to do the wire stripping here somewhere in this zone. So now we are going to shorten all the conductors that go into the RSD device. These are the three phase conductors and the neutral conductor. The grounding conductor remains the entire length as it reaches the grounding bus bar. We are now stripping the wires. If the neutral bus bar bothers you when inserting the supply cable, you can easily dismantle it. And now you have enough space to prepare the conductors. We have prepared the conductors and now we connect them. We put the neutral bus bar back in place. And we have also powered the switchboard. Here we now see the supply conductor placed to the RSD device itself and the output from the fuse at 10 amperes to one of the lighting circuits. Before finishing, it is obligatory to tighten all the parts where stranded wires come due to their settling. We have the top and bottom pages. And now you need to test the connections without voltage, for example with a multimeter that works like an ohmometer with a buzzer. We should examine where there is a short circuit between the phase conductor somewhere. The easiest way to do this is to check the condition of each other so that phase conductors are not in contact with each other. We check each phase conductor towards the neutral conductor and we can see that there is also no contact. We try towards the neutral conductor, we will now try towards the grounding conductor. There is no contact, which is great. So here is the first phase of the COM bus part switched to the first fuse, the second phase to the second fuse and the third phase to the third fuse and in that order. So we still have to cover and close off switchboard and we have finished installation. 
You can see how it fits perfectly, so undoubtedly it is a quality product. So now we have connected our switchboard to the power supply and we will perform the mandatory testing of the RSD device. We put it in the ON position and with its button intended for testing we check it. Here we can see that it starts working and it trips. We will now test the functionality of the RSD device by connecting the neutral and protective conductor, for example the grounding conductor, from any circuit coming out of the switchboard. With this procedure, in addition to testing the RSD device itself, we also test the integrity or the continuity of the protective conductor. Therefore, when connecting the neutral and protective conductor, we notice the disconnection of the RSD device and we establish the functionality of the complete grounding conductor. We will now also test our switchboard for a short circuit. We will turn on the RSD device, turn on the circuit breaker we are testing and make a short circuit between the phase and natural conductor. When testing the equipment for a short circuit, we saw that the equipment did exactly what it should, so the circuit breaker turned off the short circuit current and the RSD device remained on because it is not the one that responds to the short circuit. It is flawlessly done in case of short circuit and in case of ground fault in the previous frame. After completing the switchboard wiring and testing as you can see, your switchboard is ready for installation.